Good to have you with us. It is 10.30 in the morning in Kabul, where Afghans are facing a third full day of Taliban rule. The militants have brought back a senior leader who may become Afghanistan's new president. Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar was cheered as he arrived at the Kandahar airport Tuesday after a 20-year exile. He was one of the Taliban's core members when they ruled with an iron fist two decades ago. He took part in peace talks with the United States. States. But his presence doesn't bode well for Afghans hoping to avoid a return to brutal Islamist law. Heavily armed Taliban fighters are out in force, and for some, their presence means law and order on the streets. But women and religious minorities are especially concerned about what will come next. There are reports several female journalists have been threatened, even as a Taliban spokesman has said there will be no violence against women. Still, the militants are trying to sell Taliban 2.0, promising a lighter version of their historically strict and brutal rule. They even held a news conference Tuesday promising mercy for their enemies. We don't want Afghanistan to be a battlefield. Today, the fighting is over. Whoever was against the opposition has been given blanket amnesty. The fighting should not be repeated. Now, despite those promises, thousands of Afghans are still trying desperately to flee the country, while crowds inside the Kabul airport have thinned since the chaos we saw on Monday. It's a far different story outside, where the Taliban now control the entrances as throngs of people clamour to get inside. CNN's Nick Payton Walsh is there. <laughs> Around Kabul airport, lives spared or spoiled. At one gate, I was caught in the crush. Shots in the air. <laughs> Afghan soldiers let us in through a hole in the fence. Inside, a few lucky Afghans still with steps to go. And sleepless US Marines. Some not born before 9-11, whose first glimpse of Afghanistan here was the same as so many before them. Except this time, they were truly encircled by calm Taliban just outside, and they were leaving. The detritus of 20 years of trying was everywhere. Vehicles that may be left behind. And then the Afghans, who won't be, were blurring their faces to protect them lucky enough to get on a flight, but not as huge in number as those who had swamped the airfield the days before. It is absolutely breathtaking to see the scale of the operation on the way here and the volume of people relieved to be inside, but still chaos and jury. Flights picked up as evening fell. Urgency, but a strange disconnect to the chaos that was swirling around the airport. People inside the airport simply did not know what was happening outside and inside, they were headed in one direction. At airport security, the country's new rulers were giving their first press conference on a TV that surely shown all four of the US presidents who've been at war here. They sit and wait to be called to a new life in a land of plenty, or they will land with only what they can carry. Nick Payton Walsh, CNN, Kabul, Afghanistan. And CNN's Anna Corrin has reported from Afghanistan for years, including on a recent trip there, and she's with us now live from Hong Kong for the latest on the Taliban takeover. So, Anna, what is uh, the latest on the evacuation efforts at the airport and uh, the outlook for the next few days and weeks there? Look, we understand uh, that the airport, as it stands at the moment, is secure, that flights are... Uh, operating in and out. Uh, I spoke to some local Afghan journalists who said that they just heard uh, planes constantly uh, through the night um, landing and, and taking off. Um, so this is obviously a hive of activity as they try to get the thousands of people out. I mean, we're not just talking about uh, embassy members, staff members from the United States and, and the other countries that have embassies, had had embassies in Afghanistan or in Kabul, um, but also the Afghans that have helped uh, these countries, in particular uh, America. Uh, so we know that there is a huge backlog 
of people. Uh, but we get a sense that this is uh, far more orderly. Although President Biden has said the deadline is still the 31st of August, which Rosemary does not give a lot of time to get the tens of thousands of people out who desperately need to. When you do the math, it's hard to figure out how they will achieve that. So what more are you learning about how the Afghan people are responding to new assurances from the Taliban leadership that things will be different this time, particularly for women? Yeah, it's, it's interesting, Rosemary. Obviously, uh, the Taliban spokesperson uh, gave a, a press conference and, and tried to portray this credible, responsible, uh, modernised Taliban. Uh, people are extremely wary. Uh, he was saying all the right things. Women can go to work. Women can, you know, live the way that they lived within uh, the Sharia law framework. Um, that is where the alarm bells went off. People were sort of thinking there is a, a, a rather vague, uh, you know, statement, because what does that mean? How will that be interpreted? But I think really uh, the telling sign, uh, Rosemary, a, as to how ambiguous this all is, is when he was asked, uh, has the Taliban changed from the 90s to today? And he answered that if this question is based on thoughts, ideology, beliefs, then there is no difference. We have the same beliefs. And this is what is frightening because we know how women were treated from 1996 to 2001 when the Taliban reigned. We know um, the atrocities committed. Uh, we know what the Taliban were doing and, and, and their interpretation of this very harsh version of Sharia law. You know, Rosemary, I just got off the phone from a woman who is in Kabul. She's been working with a US agency. She's an Afghan. She's doing her MBA. Um, she is hoping to get out of there. But she said, we are waking up with this nightmare every single day, that her heart bleeds for her homeland. Um, but she said every time there is a knock at the door, she is terrified that it is the Taliban um, searching for them. I mean, you're talking about educated people who are, or at least have been targeted by the Taliban in the past. So, uh, you know, she is one of thousands um, desperate to get out of the country.